Uh, okay guys, it's nice to see you again in the second video. So, uh, first let's do some practice uh, for unit number 6a, section 1st section. Then continue with the section 2, 6b I mean. Okay, so here we have a, a kind of worksheet here. And then uh, here we have a point ordered pairs here on the left side. And here on the top, it's written first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant, and, and on x-axis and on y-axis. So, tick the relevant box for each ordered pair. Okay, we need to find which, uh, actually, point is, belongs to which, let's say, area, which location with quadrant okay let's see um, since uh, here we have two numbers right three and four and both are positive numbers right so and we said that only in first quadrant all numbers are positive I mean on the x axis numbers are positive and on the y-axis numbers are positive. So first number belongs to first quadrant. Okay. Next number, next point actually. Here we have two numbers again, ordered pair we have, and both numbers are neg negative here, both negative. So only in third quadrant uh, the both axis numbers are negative, and that's third quadrant because all numbers are negative here. Okay, what about next? Aha, uh -huh, here we have zero and seven. X is zero, no X. And seven X, seven uh, is, uh, next coordinate is seven. So, since we have no X, we have only one choice. We need to find the place of this point on y-axis on the vertical one because we don't have any x point x is zero no x-axis just we can think that we don't have any coordinate plane we have this number line and that number line is y-axis and just point uh, just plot a point seven that's it so this point will be on y-axis clear because we don't have any x. x is 0. First place is for x. Second place is for y. Is it? Okay, next one. Here we have negative 3 and positive 4. First number is negative, next number is positive. So it means that x is negative and y is positive. So that's only in 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 second quadrant, isn't it? Yes, the second quadrant. So okay, here. Okay, negative one, negative three again. And I think one, two, three here needs to be. And five, zero. Five, zero here. Look, here uh, we have x uh, coordinate five and y coordinate is zero. It means that we have no y axis. Just x axis. And we can see that only we have number line and we need to put a dot on fifth stage, fifth step. So that's why this is on x-axis. So 4 and negative 5. 4 and negative 5. First number is positive, second one is negative. So only in quadrant number 4, the x-coordinate is positive and the y-coordinate is negative. So that's why this is on 4th quadrant. 2, 8. 2 positive again in 1st quadrant negative x positive y 
negative x positive y it needs to be in the second quadrant so a negative one negative one again two negative so this point needs to be in right in comments needs to be in this, this quadrant right in comments okay negative one negative one thank you so let's start section 6b okay Okay. Okay. Okay, here. Section B. Mm -hmm. uh, this part, this part is, uh, I think, a bit difficult for some of you, but actually it is easy. Yeah, it's really easy. Okay, now I'm explaining it again because in quiz, you have some stuff about dependent, independent, and fixed variables, okay? So let's see. Okay, here. Uh, guys, first, actually, uh, you know what's, the, what's your main problem with uh, for making mistakes? The first problem is you don't read, read the instruction. You don't need, you don't read actually what they asked from you, what they asked to do. Read the instruction for each time for solving the uh, problems and try to understand the instruction, what you need to do and then do it. I don't think that every time from the first view you'll understand that what you need to do. Sometimes it will be difficult to figure out what you need to do, okay? So here, we have three different types of variables and then uh, independent, dependent and fixed or constant or controlled. Okay, let's see these examples. Here, here we have a plant and we have a pot, okay, and somebody is trying to, to put actually to give some uh, actually look it to put some look it for plant and here in the first picture they are trying to put cola let's say cola and here in this situation actually guys the the position of the variables are changing based on the situation Maybe in this current situation, this variable is independent. Maybe uh, in another situation, this variable is dependent. It can be. The dependence and independence is up to the, the situation, which situation they are in. And in this situation, cola is independent. For example, cola is dependent, depends on uh, which ingredients they use in order to make a cola. You know, there is a zero, zero cola, right? Zero. Zero cola. And maybe there is a normal cola. And this type of cola depends on the, in, in the ingredients. What they use. And if they use no sugar, it will be zero cola. If, you, if they will use sugar, it will not be zero cola. It will be just normal cola. So, uh, the variables 
the position of the variables is depend on the situation. For example, in this situation, call is independent variable. Maybe in some of another situation, the call will be dependent variable, as I said before. Okay, here the call is independent because call doesn't care about the plant, and it's up to us what liquid we use for the plant. Okay, maybe water, maybe it's orange juice or cola. Okay. So here the cola is independent variable and the height of the plant 1 meter 2 meter okay the height of the plant is dependent variable because the height of the plant depends on the atmosphere around it if you if you put this plant next to the window in order to get a more sunshine it will grow fast if you will hide it the under the table, the speed will be low. I mean, growing speed will be low. Maybe the plant will die because no sunshine it takes. Okay? And here, the height of the plant is dependent variable. It depends on the situation, actually the atmosphere around it. It depends on the sunshine. It depends on the water. It depends on the, just maybe the um, soil quality. Okay? Here, in this example, the height of the plant is depend on cola. Cola is independent, uh, actually liquid. It depend on the liquid. What liquid you use for it? But the height of the plant is dependent variable. Cola independent plant. Actually, height of the plant is dependent variable. Okay, here the second picture dependent variable and the third picture, guys. Third picture. Okay, third picture means I said that, for example, in this situation, maybe some variables will be uh, independent, will be dependent, or but there are some variables that they fixed, they are controlled, they are under control. Controlled means under control. Controlled means don't change. Okay, here in the third example, the type of the plant, the type of the plant, and the size of the pot is controlled variables. They don't change. Okay, they are not belongs to, they are not just uh, depend on the atmosphere around it, they are not depend on the sunshine. Okay, maybe color of the pot is depend on sunshine. If it will get more sunshine, its color will change, okay? But its size is still there. Size can change. Okay? Fixed, it is fixed. So these kind of variables are called fixed or controlled or constant, okay? So here we have examples. Just, I think it's the maybe 10th time that I am explaining this table to you. Anyway, <coughs> your clothes and your school. Let's just pass this section. I think it's clear. Almost clear. Okay. Here, look. We have an input output machine, let's say. And you are putting something here. And some operations is going on here. And it gives you. Uh, output and let's say x is input and y is output so it means that output is dependent variable because it depends on what you use for input okay what you use for input let's say this is juice machine if you put apple it give you apple juice if you put orange it give it will give you uh, orange juice okay so the output is dependent. Output depends on input here. Y is dependent variable, or output is dependent variable, and X is independent variable. I don't want uh, apple juice. I want orange here. I want. I put just maybe um, banana here. Okay, it's up to me. This is independent variable. X is independent. Okay, basically, basically, guys, we have a rule here, operation here. We have an input, okay, input, apple, 
and we have output apple juice okay so here let's see what's the rule sometimes rule can be changed okay maybe it was the um, let's say juice machine maybe we'll have another machines for maybe for other operations and here we have an input this is not apple guys this is a number 25 and here we have an output and some operation here let's find what's the operation here subtract 9 let's say subtract 9 okay let's take 25 and subtract 9 25 minus 9 it is 16 it's not 13 okay subtract 12 25 subtract actually minus 12 it is 13 it's correct and 14 and 15 will not be correct so the correct answer is B B is the correct answer so our operation our rule is subtract 12 okay let's see more examples here okay here <coughs> Sixty, sixty-seven, seventy-two, seventy-nine, seventy-four, eighty-one. Okay, let's see what can be the rule. I think rule is add seven. Sixty plus seven, seventy, sixty-seven, seventy-two plus seven, it is seventy-nine, and seventy-four plus seven, it is eighty-one. Okay, rule works for all the numbers in the table. All the numbers in the table, rule works. Okay. That's why 61 plus 7, it will be 68. The correct answer is 68. And the rule is, rule is add 7. Okay. Okay, here we have 3, 12, 4, 16, 7, 28 and 10. Let's see our rule is add 9. 3 at 9 is 12 or 4 at 9 it is 13 but here is 16 7 at 9 it is 16 but it is 28 so th this rule doesn't work so add add 9 it's not the rule ah maybe multiply by 4 can be the rule ah yeah it is 3 multiply by 4 it is 12 4 multiply 4 it is 16 7 multiply by 4 it is 28 and 10 multiply 4 will be 40. So, so the rule works for all the numbers in the table. So the rule is multiply by 4. Okay. So let's see what we have here. 30, 27. And the input is big. Output is small. So it needs to be uh, just division or subtraction. Because... For getting the small numbers, we need to subtract or uh, just um, or divide. Clear? Okay. Here, thirty twenty eight seven. Maybe yes, it is. It is forty thirty seven. It is just subtract three. It is subtract three. So. 30 mi minus 3 it is 28 37 minus 3 it is for 34 39 minus 3 it is 36 so the correct answer is no correct answer is 36 okay and the rule is subtract 3 okay last example okay 10 to 25 we don't know 35 7 50 10 mm -hmm. I think the rule is subtract 8 10 subtract 8 it is 2 35 oh no it's not 8 subtract 8 because 35 subtract 8 it's not 7 and even 50 subtract 8 it's not 10 ah it is division 10 divided by 5 it is 2 you see 25 divided by 5 it will be 5 here 
and then 35 divided by 7 it is 5, 50 divided by 10 is 5, okay, correct. So here the rule is divide by 5, okay? Okay, let's see. Okay, here. Okay, guys, we have four different ways of explaining the rule. Okay. You see, I have explained the rule here in four different ways. So, uh, we have 36 and 37 and 69, 70, 14, 15. The rule is add 1 and here needs to be 56. Okay, you see the rule is add one and in the other word I, I can say output which is output numbers here is equal to input plus one it's correct for each output I need to take the input and out, add one it is correct uh -huh. in the other words we can say y is equal to x plus one because I said before because I said before here the input is x, the output is y. You see? The input, output. Input is x, output is y. Because generally, we can use just x for input, y for output. Okay? That's why rule is add 1, output is equal to input plus 1, y is equal to x plus 1. And then, and then, uh, then officially, the function is uh, the function notation is not y and x x the function notation is f of x f of x is equal to x plus 1 in the third number fourth way we can say f of x is equal to x plus 1 so let's do the same operation the same naming the same for different naming for the next two tables okay here 31 21 74, 64, okay, it is, I think, subtract 10, isn't it? It is. So here needs to be 8. Okay, let's write 8. And the rule is subtract 8, okay? It's the first way, first writing. Secondly, I can write the output. Output is equal to input minus 8, right? Okay. Thirdly, I can write y is equal to x, which is input, minus 8. Okay. And the thirdly, I can write f of x is equal to x minus 8. Clear? Okay. Now please write in comments what's the missing number here and write the first, second, third and fourth way of explaining this table, okay? I'm waiting for the comments. Do it. Okay. So. And the lastly, let me reply that the f of x is equal to, for example, 2x or output is equal to input multiplied by 2 or just y is equal to 2 multiplied by x. 2x means 2 multiplied by x. Actually, here is we have a dot here. Okay, 2 multiplied by x, but they don't write this multiplication. This 2x is known as 2 multiplied by x. So this is the same. y is equal to 5x is... is f of x is equal to 5x and the generally we, the, we use f of x because the the, um, the first letter of the function is f and actually guys I, I forgot to say this 
And before this, uh, I, I said rule and operation, rule and operation, or process, I said, rule, operation, process. But in mass, we called, we use instead of these three words, I mean rule, operation, and process, a function, okay? The rule here, the rule here, look, the rule here, this is a function, okay? Function. This function takes input and make some changes on this input and give us a kind of output. So the rule is of function, okay? The function. The first letter of the function is f, that's why the general notation is f of x, okay? And um, next to this f of x, we can use g of x, h of x, a of x, b of x, it is possible. If you see b of x, don't get surprised, it's normal. But generally they use f of x or y is equal to x blah blah. Okay. Okay guys, I think it's enough. And just for any question write in comments and I am waiting for two just answers in comments. See you next. Bye.